Well, hello and welcome to our weekly Bible study called Hump Day. And today we will be talking about the sheep and his shepherd. Remember, the series is the isness of God. And today's lesson, the sheep and his shepherd. We will be coming from Psalms number 23. And that Psalms has so much in it until after today, the series will be the sheep and his shepherd. And we will continue studying Psalms number 23. All right, but let's get started. In fact, next to John 3.16, uh, Psalms number 23 is probably the best known and most beloved passages in all the Word of God. Wonder why that is? Well, because a closer look reveals that this is a very personable scripture. It's about he and me. I mean, consider. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why not? Thy, cause thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, it's all about he and me, the sheep and his shepherd. And I, I, it, I don't know what he is to you. But when we read this, it becomes personable. Now, he and me, the sheep and the shepherd. In the first part of the psalm, the sheep is talking about the shepherd. In the second part of the psalm, he is talking to the shepherd. And Jacob was the first to describe the Lord as the shepherd of his people. And this image is developed progressively throughout Scripture until it finds its fulfillment in Jesus Christ. Now, most scholars view Psalms 22, 23, and 24 uh, as a unit that prophetically depicts the ministry of Jesus. And the New Testament identifies Jesus as, first of all, the good shepherd. John 10, 11 says, I am, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Then he says he the, uh, no no no. The writer of Hebrews says he's the great shepherd. 
Hebrew 13, 20. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. And then Peter calls him the chief shepherd. And look at 1 Peter 5, 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Now, I have a, a portrait on my office wall that gives a lot of names of Jesus. And it's called Good Shepherd, Great Shepherd, chief shepherd, but David says, my shepherd. Whoa. Now, Psalms 22 presents Christ, Psalms 22 presents Christ as the good shepherd who died for his sheep. Psalms 23 presents Christ as the great shepherd who lives for his sheep. And Psalms 24 presents Christ as the chief shepherd who comes for his sheep. So Christ meets every need in our lives. He feeds us and leads us throughout our journey. He loves and cares for us, and we are his sheep. Therefore, we are able to rest easy and secure in him. And that is the glorious message of Psalms 23. Now, let's look at verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Let's take it word by word. The, that's a definite article, is not vague, it's specific. It's certain about something. He does not say the Lord, or no, he does not say a Lord, as if it could be anybody, but he used a definite article, the Lord. Uh, he is not using an indefinite article like it could be one of them. No, no, no. He is looking at him as the one and only. He is certain about something. He is like he's pointing and say, the Lord. Now, so, now let's look at the word Lord. And David uses the name Lord, all caps. And when you see the name in all caps, he is also known as Jehovah. Jehovah. Now, let me tell you something. It's interesting that we do not see this name Lord or Jehovah used until after he creates Adam and Eve. See, before then, he used the name Elohim, God, who made the plants and made everything. But when it came to man, he becomes Lord. And if you remember, Moses asked him, what is your name? He said, tell them, I am that I am. That's what Jehovah, Jehovah, Yahweh, Lord, it's personable. And Lord presents the, the, the special relationship we have with him. So, but all caps. Now, there is the name Lord with capital L and the rest of it is lower caps. That's Adonai. It's used both of deity and people 
in the Bible. However, when it's used of people, it's translated using a small L. A small L. It also is translated meaning master or owner when referring to people. It speaks of a servant and his relationship to his master. And when it is used in reference to God, it's a capital L. It's a capital L. And if you ever notice, that's exactly the word, the name that the disciples use always with the capital L. They recognized him as master and owner. Now, let's go to the third word, is. Is is a verb. And a verb is a, a word used to describe an action or state or occurrence. So, he is saying, the Lord is, is. He does not say, the Lord might. Uh, no, let me go back it up. He does not say, the Lord was, as if it's in the present or the past. He don't say, the Lord will be, as if it's in the future. He is saying the Lord is, present tense, and whatever you use it, it is right now. And he uses the personal pronoun, my, and my is a form of possession. And it becomes personal, not a shepherd, not the shepherd, but my shepherd. So it has become personal with David when he says the Lord is my shepherd. Now, who is speaking? The sheep. The sheep is speaking. And the characteristics of a sheep, and the sheep have all the things that we don't want to be. We are sheep. And the sheep have characteristics of all the things we don't want to be. The sheep is dumb, stubborn, defenseless without a sense of direction. Sheep is prone to wander, slow to recognize dangers, nervous and uneasy, easily excitable and frightened. That's the sheep. And we are his sheep. Psalms 100 and verse 4 says, Know ye, uh, verse 3, sorry. Know ye that the Lord, all caps, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Look at Psalm 79, 13. So we thy people and sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. Look what Isaiah 53 and 6 says. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned. Everyone to his own way. I told you we're like sheep. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity 
of us all. Matthew 10, 16. Behold, this is Jesus speaking. I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Now, sheep in the midst of wolves may as well hang it up because them wolves are going to attack. So what makes you think that wolves won't attack you? So he said, be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Look at, at um, John 10, 3. To him the porter opened and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name and lead them out. So we are sheep. Characteristics of shepherd. The shepherd is patient with his sheep. The shepherd knows and values his sheep. The shepherd loves his sheep. The shepherd observes his sheep. The shepherd feeds, leads, and guides his sheep and rests his sheep. Now, I have a question to ask you. Are we shepherds? If you if you teach in a Sunday school class, you head of a ministry, you are a shepherd. And the people in it are your flock. So how are you treating? You a parent? You a shepherd. So are you patient with your sheep? Do you know and value your sheep, love your sheep, observe your sheep, feed, lead, and guide your sheep, and rest your sheep? Jeremiah 3.15. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah 23, 4, I will place shepherds over them who will tend them, and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. All right, so let's look at a little bit more. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord for. Ever. Now, our lesson <clears throat> is only going to cover the first two verses. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So we're going to see that the shepherd provides. The sheep has already declared that the Lord is my shepherd, which means, listen to me now, the sheep 
has no needs that the shepherd will not provide for them. And this is declared emphatically. King James Version said, I shall not want. 1984 NIV says, I shall not be in want. NIV says, I lack nothing. The NLT, the New Living Translation says, I have all that I need. The Good News Translation, I have everything I need. The message said, I don't need a thing. And, and uh, God's Word Translation, I am never in need. Now take a look at that picture. Do these sheep look weary? Well, they don't to me. I, in fact, I kind of like that picture. They, they are resting. Why? Because they have a good shepherd. But let me say this. All this I shall not want. I will not be in want. I lack nothing. The sheep is not just talking about material things. What the sheep is saying. I shall not lack the expert care and management of my master. Woo! No, no. The welfare of the flock is entirely dependent on the shepherd. So that's why you saw the picture of those sheep and with the question, do these sheep look worried? No. Why? Because sheep don't worry. They follow. Well, if I had a mic, I'd just go on and drop it. Sheep don't worry. You worry. They follow. They trust. See, trust and worry cancel out each other. Trust and worry, they cannot exist. The same as faith and fear cannot exist together. Trust and worry cancel out each other. If you're going to worry, trust leave. If, if you're going to trust, worry has to go. And the sheep trust the shepherd. So they don't worry. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. God's word is the remedy for weary. Ooh, ooh, let me break that down again a little bit more. God's word is the remedy for weary. And Jesus is called the word of God. God abide it. John said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. Jesus is the Word. So, God's Word, Jesus, is the remedy for worry. In fact, that was the lesson that my mother taught us. God will take care of you. God will. And the shepherd will meet your physical and your spiritual needs. So actually what the sheep is saying, I am completely satisfied with his management of my life. Oh yeah, we don't have to worry about what we're going to eat. Because Matthew, look at Matthew 6.25. Jesus said, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you should eat or what you should drink, not yet for your body, what you should put on. 
Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? I, 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 let, let me ask you this question. Let's say you got a grandchild or a child, young, and your five-year-old grandchild come to you and say, Grandmama, Granddaddy, Uncle, Aunt, whoever, Dad, Mom, I didn't get much sleep last night because I was worried. And they say, what were you worried about? I was worried about whether I have enough retirement fund taken. Uh-huh. A five-year-old retirement? Uh-uh. So all that five-year-old does is don't even worry because mom and dad, grandmama, granddad, or whoever, they got this. They got this. I tell you, I, I think I've told you before, my great nephew, when he was at Price Elementary, one number about eight or nine, ten, something like that, when he saw me pick him up, he was happy. Why? Because he knew auntie was going to take him to McDonald's and get a Happy Meal. He didn't worry about paying about it. He All he knew is that auntie would take him to get it. Isaiah 40 and 11 said, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd, and he will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those with young. Uh, so, so, you got nothing to worry about. But let me tell you something. Sheep are easily frightened. A, a, a stray jackrabbit can jump from behind the bush and it can cause a whole herd to stampede. You see, because when one runs, the others run right behind it. If you could, you could stop and say, what you running for? And he said, I don't know, because they running. They run. So when the sheep see one running, but you know, we can be like that sometimes. See, one disgruntled member can create a disturbance in the entire church. Because we have the sheep mentality. We scare easy, but nothing can calm the sheep like the shepherd. But let, let, let me go on. Oh, let, let me say this before I go. I got, I got to. One disgruntled member can create a disturbance in the entire church. Complaining, discouragement, cause somebody else to be discouraged. And so they complain. You know, I have to look back at Joshua at Jericho. Go back and read Joshua chapter 6. When they got over into the promised land, the first place they was at was Jericho. And then they start to march around the wall. That was what God said, once a day for seven days. And I used to smile and think that God is way ahead of us because he told Joshua, 
tell them to just march. Don't say a word. And one day I thought, well, why couldn't they talk? Then the Spirit said, because if one talks, then they will discourage the whole truth. Why are we marching around this wall? But look at that. That ain't doing nothing. Well, why are we doing this? I don't know why. And then somebody else will hear, see, this is silly. They up there, they laughing at us. They talking about us. And that's what we have at times. In our ministries, in our choirs, in our classes, we have disgruntled member who can cause a disturbance in the whole entire church. So if you don't know something, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Because the other sheep will hear it. And they will become discouraged. In fact, God told us, he said, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So that doesn't leave any room for doubt or discouragement. We get discouraged because we want to see things a certain way. And when we can't have our way, then we start to mumbling and a grumbling. Sheep, let me move on, must be free from all fear. There must be no tension between the members of the flock. And let me say, in every animal society, there is an established order of dominance or status. In chicken, it's the pecking order. In sheep, it's called the budding order. What you have, show them that picture, yeah. See, see, you see, it's not easy for a sheep to lie. Look, 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 butt head. What happens is a sheep maintain their status by budding and driving away other sheep from their favorite sheep, seat. I, I, I mean spot, I mean spot, their favorite gazing spot. Uh, but don't some of us have our favorite seat? And we come in late and last and then want to move everybody. That's my seat. That's my chair. And generally, an arrogant, cunning, domineering OU will be boss of any bunch of sheep. And she maintains her position, her prestige, by budding and driving other ewes or lambs away from the best grazing, our favorite spot. We, we want who we want in our ministry. We want who we want in our class. Now, the question is, do we see head budding in the church because someone is sitting in our seat? Yeah. Yeah. And we have a territorial mentality that creates a problem in the church. It's my class, my church. My ministry. And we create a problem in the church. Now, and because of uh, when there is tension in the flock, when there is tension in the flock, the sheep can't lie down and rest. They must always stand up 
and be ready to fight. And we got some Christians who are always ready to fight. They must not be aggravated. I'm talking about sheep now. By fleas are parasites. Fleas are parasites. And when they are tormented by, let's say, fleas, ticks, parasites, you name it. If you got a pet dog and you go outside and look like a, a, a fly want to buzz around his ear, they constantly have to dump their head. Well, guess what? Sheep, especially in the summer, can be driven to absolute distraction by flies and ticks. And when they are tormented by these pests, it is literally impossible for them to lie down and rest. You see, only the diligent care of the shepherd who keeps a constant lookout for these insects will, pre will prevent them from ignoring the flock. You see, the fr what happens is these fleas or ticks or flies will get up the sheep's nostril and it aggravates them. It, it bothers them to distraction. I can understand that. So the shepherd has to be on the watch out. So it's not easy for a sheep to lie down. Uh, point to ponder, what, flea, what flies or parasite is an annoyance to the congregation members today? Think about that. Think about, let me tell you some fleas or some parasites that can annoy, that can bring annoyance to us. Not necessarily to talk about the congregation, but if we ain't right, then we go in and everything else gets off. If you got children getting on your nerves, a spouse that you worried about, a job that is creating problems for you. Bills, they can be parasites of flies that annoy us. And we cannot lie down and rest. Sheep must be free from hunger. Now you know, you know that when you're hungry, it's hard for you to lay down and go to sleep. Stomach is a rumbling and a growling. Well, guess what? Sheep can't either. They got to be free from hungry. A hungry sheep is always on his feet, searching for something to eat. And the scripture tells us the world, uh, you remember that song, the world is hungry for the living bread, lift the Savior up for them to see. And that's what we've got to give them, the word of God to feed the church. Well, in contrast, the extremely wealthy of society, they, you know what they would do? They would hire employees who are referred to as hirelings to tend to their flock. And Jewish society sharply distinguished between the shepherds and the hireling. In fact, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, 
the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leads the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees. This is Jesus talking because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. So in John 10, Jesus distinguishes himself as the good shepherd, contrasting himself with those shepherds of Israel who are rebuked by the Lord in Ezekiel. Ezekiel identified the wicked shepherds of Israel who care for themselves at the expense of the flock. They prey upon the sheep rather than protecting them from predators. They feed and clothe themselves at the expense of the flock, yet they do nothing to minister to the needs of the sickly or injured among the flock. Oh, my Lord. That's a terrible thing. But let me take a little sip of water. In our churches, we have some hirelings. Now look at these pictures. The top one, he who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leads the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. You see that uh, he's running and the sheep are running, but the wolf has caught a sheep. I, I want you to look at it. Take a hard look at it. And Ezekiel indicts the wicked shepherds of Israel who cares for themselves at the expense of the flock. He said, you drank the milk, wear the wool, butcher the best animals, but you let your flock starve. And now, you look at the bottom picture. The difference between a hireling and a shepherd. A hireling flees at the first sight of danger. And the hireling only cares for himself. But you see the shepherd. He's got his rod. He's got his, his rod and his cane. He is ready to defend. And look at the sheep. They are content. They got the head down. They ain't worried about nothing. They see the water there. They got the grass. And the shepherd walks among them. The hireling. His motivation, profit. His means, personal. His method, he preys on the flock. But the shepherd, his motivation, love. His method, he leads. He don't drive, he leads. His ministry, he looks at all the time. So when danger comes, the hireling will flee. The shepherd will fight. The hireling leaves. The shepherd lifts. The hireling is lax. The shepherd is looking. And the difference? Glad you asked. The shepherd is called by God. The hireling is called by self or others. The shepherd has a servant heart. The hireling is self-serving. The shepherd cares about souls. The hireling cares about self. 
the shepherd is humble. The hireling is arrogant. The shepherd preaches truth. The hireling mixes truth with untruth. The shepherd protects the sheep, and the hireling allows the enemy to come and devour. The shepherd will go after lost sheep, not aware, and the hireling not aware that the sheep is lost. The shepherd has the heart of God, and the sheep has, I mean, the hireling has a cold heart. Now, that's our lesson, but let me say this. If the Lord is not your shepherd, or you have wandered away from his flock, you can make the choice now to be reconnected to the flock. We invite you to join us, St. Stephen Church, Hump Day Life Group. And we encourage you to do it now, today. Just contact us at newstart at sscli.org, O-R-G, or call 502-583-6798, extension 0. You and uh, tell them you wish to join St. Stephen. You will be contacted by a member, uh, a, a staff member of member services, and they will help you with the membership process. Or send it to me. Say, I want to become a member of Hump Day or St. Stephen Church. Send it to me. Just email me at gnelson uh, at sscilive.org. And I will contact you or have a person from member services to contact you. That's it. And you can become a part of this flock. Well, I'll see you next week. We will talk about, remember, the series will be the sheep and his shepherd. We will continue, and we will probably do verse 3 and 4, I hope. And the lesson be, will be called, Where He Leads Me, I Will Follow. See you next week. Be blessed.